Welcome. This is my introduction to 3D printing. This will be part of a 3D printing course series that I will hope to finish this year. So yeah, next slide. So let me first begin by telling you the definition of 3D printing. 3D printing is a commonly used term that is used by media, but it is also known as additive manufacturing. So additive manufacturing, according to ASTM, is the process of joining materials to make objects from 3D model data usually layer upon layer as opposed to subtractive manufacturing methods. So from the picture on the left, you could see this de definition shown as a picture. The orange material is layered layer by layer until it forms the cylindrical object as you can see. <laughs> Next slide. So what is 3D printing used for? 3D printing is traditionally used for making prototypes and physical models of objects in a variety of materials such as plastic, metal, ceramic, and composites. Now these days, you are seeing that 3D printing is getting interest from many industries due to its capabilities of producing functional parts in a variety of materials, as stated. An example of this is that customized earbuds or earpiece has been produced through 3D printing, as can as you can see from the image on the right. Next slide. So in this slide, you could see a pie chart that's done by the Wallace Report 2004 that shows the uses of 3D printing by companies. So this is a survey. So as you can see from the pie chart, the majority of it is used in functional parts and the second is in fit and assembly for testing of new components or product. So yeah, next slide. So now that we know that 3D printing is used to create functional parts, which industries are actually using them? The two main industries, in my opinion, that are driving 3D printing are the medical industry and the aerospace industry. Firstly, the medical industry. So doctors and researchers in Australia, Victoria if I believe, has used 3D, printer, 3D printing to print a metallic ankle for a patient so as to save his foot so this is a important driver as people would pay money to 3d print a particular object to help them improve their lives another industry in that another industrial driver is the aerospace industry so because 3d printing can lighten the components and also make existing components stronger so you can see that this will lead into a lighter aircraft, which in the end will save the aircraft fuel cost, which is a lot of money. So this money saving is driving 3D printing development industrially. So yeah. So now that we know that 3D printing can print a variety of materials for a variety of applications, I want to point out that 3D printing actually consists of many different methods. And on the left, you can see a classification by ASTM that shows that 3D printing can be classified either as a binder jetting process, a powder bit fusion process, a direct energy process, and so forth. However, for ordinary people, I believe the classification by materials, such as whether the material input in the 3D printer is solid, liquid, or powder, is a simpler method of classification. But these are mainly just terminologies that one has to take note when you are discussing about different 3D printing methods. So yeah, next slide. So why are people and industries excited on 3D printing and want to create their functional parts using this method? The benefits of 3D printing can be shown on this slide. Firstly, 3D printing reduces the product development time that means that designers can come from ideas to product at a shorter time as compared to conventional means. A second benefit of 3D printing is the ability of one to create one-off parts at a reduced cost. Conventionally, to create a plastic part, you need to have a, you need to have a scale of maybe 10,000 to make it viably cheap because the tooling that is required to create your one item costs a lot. Thus, you need to sell a large amount of items to offset that cost. However, with 3D printing, this, is, this cost is much reduced. 
Another, the next benefit of 3D printing is the ability to create complex geometry. So 3D printing allows the creation of geometries that traditional manufacturing methods such as maybe machining or casting cannot create, such as uh, interlocking parts or interlocking assemblies. Next, another benefit, the next benefit of 3D printing is that it brings manufacturing closer to people. As you can see from the image on the right, you have a, a, basically a 3D printer farm on this, on this shop store display. So manufacturing can be done in a simple shop rather than in a very large factory. So this means that manufacturing is much closer to people than ever before. So yeah. So however, while the benefits of 3D printing are sure to excite people and industry, there are also several concerns of 3D printing that I would like to point out in this video. So first is the infringement of copyrights and ideas. So when 3D printing is paired with another technology called 3D scanning, one is easily able to copy an existing product and to 3D print that product in his or her backyard without the knowledge of the original maker. Another concern of 3D printing is the development of dangerous weapons. So while I didn't point out that military is a, another industrial driver of 3D printing development, it is important to point out that 3D printing can, has, can have the ability to develop more dangerous weaponries for militaries around the world. Another concern of 3D printing is the safety concerns. So as you know that 3D printing allows local manufacturing. However, what happens when you have a manufacturing grade machine in your own home? What are the safety rules and precautions that one is going to apply to him or herself without any supervision of the government or any regulator or any bodies of safety? So the last concern I have with 3D printing is pro possibly the ethical issues of 3D bioprinting. However, this is not currently in the present industry, in the present landscape. So my concern is that in the future, if people could 3D print a heart or a liver, so what, what would people do with such a thing if this technology becomes very common? So yeah, next slide. So next we move on to what is actually changing in 3D printing. So in the past, 3D printing is known as rapid prototyping that focused on creating prototypes and tools. Now these days, we are seeing that 3D, the development of 3D printing allows the creation of objects that are superior than conventional methods for industrial applications and also research into smart materials and large-scale nanostructures are getting to the stage of being significant. So on the image on the right, you can see this is a, the largest nanostructure 3D printed today. It's by a company called Tetra. So yeah, next. So rather than tell you about things that will happen in the next 5 to 20 years, in this video, I want to tell you what is changing right now. So 3D printing is now enabling people like you and me to rapid prototype their ideas at their home. So this was not possible 20 years ago when 3D printing was invented for industry, for industry. So now you can rapidly produce your ideas into functional products in which you can sell to other people at your backyard. So this is what is changing currently. And this will affect not only designers, but this will also affect students who are able to 3D print objects that they designed in school. So instead of showing what they designed on a computer, they can physically manufacture what they designed by themselves in their home. So this is what that is changing currently. Yeah. So now we reach to the summary of this slide. So I hope, I hope you understand what is the definition of additive manufacturing or probably come out with an idea of definition of your own of what you think 3D printing is. I hope you also know the users of 3D printing and the various industries that are driving 3D printing development. 
but you could also take time to to think about what can 3d printing do for you or for your job next i hope you understand the classification of 3d printing basically this is meant simply to help one to create a sort of a category so that when one tries to absorb new information of different 3d printing methods one can classify them into such and so the learning of 3d printing methods become a more easily under, uh, understandable next in this video i mentioned about the benefits and concerns of 3d printing so you can you can be the judge of yourself to see whether do you want to bring this 3d printing technology in your home and to teach your son of kids on 3d printing because there are there are obvious benefits but there are also concerns of 3d printing lastly mentioned in this video is in the changing 3d printing landscape in which industrial 3d printing is slowly coming to development and but currently it is the personal person's ability to rapid prototype in his or her backyard that i believe is changing rapidly and that students and and entrepreneurs are developing their products or things that they learn in school at their home or at the classroom level so this is pretty amazing really so with this i end my video and once again i would like to thank the references and all the websites for the images so once again this video was created based on a module that i learned in my university it's called prototyping and rapid prototyping modules some reference textbook and report that i would like to reference are the 3d printing and additive manufacturing principles and applications and also the wallace report 2014 both of which i think will give you a good understanding of 3d printing theory and hopefully enjoy the video thank you very much yeah